Basic Electrical 1 for automatic transmission students. Every electrical circuit needs a power source. In our case, we're going to use the 12 volt DC battery. The electrical symbol for the DC battery is a series of vertical lines. The long line to the left is the positive side, and the short line to the right is the negative side. Conductors allow the electrons to flow. Good conductors are things made of metal, such as copper and silver and gold. Insulators, on the other hand, protect against electron flow. Good insulators would be plastic, wood, or rubber. A complete electrical circuit will take a con conductor and connect it to the positive side of the battery. The next path will be into an electrical load. From the electrical load, you will have a path back to the battery. This completes an electrical circuit. A complete circuit is a circuit that follows the particular path. When we start at the battery and we flow all the way to the load, the circuit is not complete if it can't return back to the battery. Here we have placed a switch on the ground side. This creates an open inner circuit. On the other diagram, the open has been placed on the positive side. It really doesn't matter where the open takes place. If the circuit is not complete from the positive side of the battery through the load to the negative side of the battery, you have what's known as an open circuit. Voltage is electrical pressure. The amount of voltage, along with resistance in a circuit, will determine the electron flow. Resistance is an electrical restriction to electron flow. The amount of resistance and voltage is directly related to the amperage flow through the circuit. Amperage is the measured amount of electron flow within a completed circuit. Amperage flow is directly related to the circuit resistance and voltage potential. Wattage is the power output or work output that is the result of electricity flowing through a completed circuit. Wattage or power from a light bulb that is on is in the form of light and heat. This animation represents a water analogy where you have a pump that picks up fluid from a reservoir pushes it through a channel of pipes which produces a pounds per square inch. The flow meter indicates how much water is flowing through the pipes. If you click the increase button that will increase the resistance of the flow through the circuit. You will then see a reduction of return amount of water. Click the increase again and you will see even less water returning back to the reservoir. Now return to the decrease button and you can see the water increases as it goes back to the reservoir. You can also watch the amperage flow meter. Every time you increase the resistance, the flow meter reduces. Every time you decrease the resistance, the flow meter increases.
in a complete circuit, as electrons pass through the conductors, they produce a small magnetic field called magnetic lines of force. If the wire is wrapped in a loop, these magnetic lines of force will multiply or increase in strength as the electrons flow through them. If additional loops are added to the wire, then as electrons flow through, the additional loops increase the magnetic lines of force. The increase in magnetic lines of force will therefore increase the magnetism or the magnetic power or strength of the loop of windings. One last addition to our electromagnet is to fill the void with an iron core or soft metal, something that conducts magnetism. Filling the air void with an iron core will increase the magnetic strength of the loop of windings even further. This creates an electromagnet. We use the electromagnetic principle to actually control a set of contacts acting as an electromagnetic switch. This set of contacts can now be used to control a various number of electrical components. This concept is called a relay. If you click the close button, that will close the field coil switch. This in turn will build the electromagnetism in the coil of windings. The contacts will close, allowing current to flow through the light bulb and turn the light on. As soon as you click the open button, the field coil will de-energize the contact switch will return to the open position and the light bulb will go off. This standard relay uses thousands and thousands of feet of wire in order to create an electromagnet to control these contacts. If we look closer, we can see the contacts in a zoomed-in view. This controls electrical current off to an electrical device. Another very common usage for electromagnetism is the use of a solenoid. The solenoid will use the electromagnet to pull a soft iron core or a plunger down into a bore. The spring can return the plunger back to its normal position if there's no electromagnetism. The solenoid is often used to control the flow of liquid or vapor through two passageways. If you click the close button, that will energize the solenoid, pull the plunger down, and open the passageway. If you click the open button, the electromagnetism will go away, the spring will push the plunger up, and the passageway will close. Amperage in a circuit can be controlled by modulating or turning the current on and off very rapidly. This is called pulse-width modulation. By 
turning the switch on and off very rapidly in a given period of time, we can actually control how much current is flowing through the circuit. We do this on a duty cycle. If we have 100% duty cycle, that means the switch is closed all the time and you get maximum amperage through the circuit. If you have 0% duty cycle, that means the switch is open all the time and no current is flowing. By controlling the amount of current flow, we can control the illumination or the brightness of the light bulb. In addition, if we want to use a solenoid, we can control the position of a solenoid. Here, clicking the 25% duty would put about a half an amp on an average through the circuit. The light would be very dim and the circuit would be off 75% of the time and only on 25% of the time. A 50% duty would be approximately one amp of current flow through the circuit and that would have a nice even on-off pulse within a given period of time. A 75% duty would indicate the current is flowing 75% of the time and off only 25% of the time. This would give us approximately one half amps flowing through the circuit and each position controls the illumination of the light or the amount of work a load will do. The use of a three-port solenoid, similar to what we use in an automatic transmission, along with pulse width modulation, allow us a very fine control of the fluid passageway into the system. We use a fluid input, a fluid output, and a fluid return back to the pan. By returning a predetermined amount back to the oil pan, we can actually control the amount of fluid pressure within our circuit or within our system. We control this by controlling the duty cycle of the pulse width on the solenoid. One thing to remember, this solenoid pulse is very fast and even though the animation has 0, 25, 50, 75% and 100%, the actual solenoid and pulse width modulation can be any number between 0 and 100. I can have 97.5%, 2%, 56%, anywhere in between to control the amount of fluid pressure to the value that's needed within the system.